In this video, we'll be discussing the learning rate, and we'll see how it's used when we train a neural network. In our previous video on what it means for an artificial neural network to learn, we briefly mentioned the learning rate as a number that we multiply our resulting gradient by. Let's go more into that idea now. So we know that the objective during training is for SGD to minimize the loss between the actual output and the predicted output from our given training samples. The path towards this minimized loss is occurring over several steps. Recall, we're starting the training process with arbitrarily set weights, and then we incrementally update these weights as we move closer and closer to the minimized loss. Now the size of these steps we're taking to reach our minimized loss is going to depend on the learning rate. Conceptually, we can think of the learning rate of our model as this step size. Before going further, let's first pause for a quick refresher. We know that during training, after the loss is calculated for our given inputs, the gradient of that loss is then calculated with respect to each of the weights in our model. Now once we have the value of these gradients, this is where the idea of our learning rate comes in. The gradients will then get multiplied by the learning rate. This learning rate is a small number, usually ranging between 0 0.01 and 0 0.0001, but the actual value can vary. So any value we get for the gradient is going to become relatively small once we multiply it by this learning rate. Alright, so we get the value of this product for each gradient multiplied by the learning rate, and we then take each of these values and update the respective weights by subtracting this value from them. So essentially, we ditch the previous weights that were set on each connection and update them with these new values. The value we chose for the learning rate is going to require some testing. The learning rate is another one of those hyperparameters that we have to test and tune with each model before we know exactly where we want to set it. But as mentioned earlier, a typical guideline is to set it somewhere between 0.01 and 0.0001 for starting out. When setting the learning rate to a number on the higher side of this range, we risk the possibility of overshooting. This occurs when we take a step that's too large in the direction of the minimize loss function and shoot past the minimum and miss it. To avoid this, we can set the learning rate to a number on the lower side of this range. With this option, since our steps will be really small, it will take us a lot longer to reach the point of minimize loss. Alright, so now we have an idea about what the learning rate is and how it fits into the overall process of training. Let's see how we can specify the learning rate in code using Keras. So I'm in my Jupyter Notebook, and I already have the model specified here that we've used in previous videos. So if we focus our attention to this cell here where we're compiling our model, we can see that the first parameter we're specifying is our optimizer. I'm using Adam as the optimizer for this model, which is a variant of SGD. Now to our optimizer, we can optionally pass our learning rate by specifying the LR parameter. We can see that here we're specifying 0.0001 as the learning rate. Notice I mentioned that this LR parameter is optional. If we don't explicitly set it, then the default learning rate that Keras has assigned to this particular optimizer will be set. To see what this default learning rate is, you'll just need to check the Keras documentation for the optimizer you're specifying. Now there's also another way we can specify the learning rate. After compiling our model, we can set the learning rate by setting model.optimizer.lr to our designated value. Here we can see that I'm setting it to 0.01. Now if we print the value of our learning rate, we can see it's now changed from 0.0001 that we specified when we compiled our model to 0.01 now. And that's really all there is to it for specifying the learning rate for our model in Keras. So in addition to this, hopefully you now have an understanding of what the learning rate is, how it fits into the overall process of training, and why we need to test and tune it to find the value that's optimal for our model. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.